Today we're going to jump right into it. We're talking about mistakes that you are making as a nursing student, specifically as you're preparing to study for med surge exams, with med surge one and med surge two. There are eight mistakes that you're making, and then I'm giving you tools to help you succeed. Hi, my name is Anna. I am an ICU travel nurse, nurse educator, and first year student registered nurse anesthetist. The problem that most nursing students have when they start to dive into med surge one and med surge two is that it's just different in format than it, any of the other classes that you've taken before. You've taken a bunch of other science classes and done really well. You took your bio one and two, your AMP one and two, your general chemistry, your microbiology, and then your pathophysiology and pharmacology, all of which are really difficult and bulky classes. So you have a bunch of studying techniques that you've used. However, what you are using doesn't necessarily apply to med surge in the same way. You might have had the experience that you had your first med surge exam and you didn't get the grade that you were expecting to see. I experienced that as well. <laughs> and we're just going to go over a bunch of the tips that are going to help you succeed and then think eight of the things that you're doing wrong and then how to change that. So med surge is different from any of your other science courses that you've taken. You've already done really well in AMP 1 and 2, biology, pathophysiology. What's different about med surge specifically is that you are not being taught a disease process. You are being given a patient presentation with a disease process and you are being asked, what's the most important thing to do here and what are you gonna do first? And also the format of these test questions is different. It, it's not a multiple choice, it's select all that apply. So perfectionist nursing students who have gone from being really good at multiple choice exams, when they get into the select all that apply with specifically med surge exams, sometimes are very frustrated because you'll have options A through K, and then you have to select all of the ones that are going to go together. And if you don't get the whole question right, then you miss the whole question, which it can be extremely frustrating. The first mistake that you are making as you are studying for med surge is that you are not thinking about safety first. You already know the disease process, you know the patient presentation, you know the signs and symptoms, and you know the medications that are going to be given for this disease. But sometimes you are not thinking about safety first. As a nurse, what nursing school is teaching you to do is how to be competent to practice. They're not teaching you all the fun stuff. They're not teaching you all of the advanced pharmacology and critical care that you would like to be taught necessarily. What they're teaching you is how to be safe as an entry to practice nurse. That is why the NCLEX and MedSurg focuses a lot on safety and it focuses a lot on assessment. So, what does that look like? If you are given a multiple choice or a select all that apply question and you see the option to assess the patient or to uh, do some safety intervention, like ensure that you have an ambu bag, call the charge nurse, call the provider, that's probably the right answer. Because again, nursing school is not expecting you to know everything. They're expecting for you to know the baseline of disease presentations, what normal is, and then when to call for help. So you're going to find in med surge and in all of your NCLEX preparation, anytime that there is something that says something to the effect of safety first or assessment, that's usually the right answer. So the mistake is that you were not focusing on safety first, and then that is an easy way to start getting a couple of those questions right on exams. The second mistake that you're making as you're studying for med surge is that you are not ruling out the obviously wrong choices on the select all that apply. So the same thing that has carried you through all of your core science courses up until med surge, you need to use those same techniques and then just add more to it. So instead of looking at a select all that apply question and getting really overwhelmed by having options A through K, you need to sit there and you need to take a deep breath and you need to start systematically crossing off the answers that you know are wrong. So if you have options A through K and then you can cross off A through D, you just made it much more likely that you're going to get most of the correct answers. And at this point, you already know pathophysiology, you already know pharmacology. So taking what you know about the presentation of the disease process and then crossing off what's obviously wrong is gonna take you from a one in 10 chance of getting the question right, if you have all of those select all that apply options to like a one in three or a one in two chance to get the question right. So just set yourself up for success in that way and don't, take yourself out of the race before you even start by freaking out and then just being overwhelmed and then circling answers that you don't know the answers to. Because even if you don't know the answer to a question, you probably know some of the wrong answers. 
So every time that you see a question that you're a little bit overwhelmed with and you don't really know the answer, start by crossing off the answers that you know are wrong and then go from there. The third mistake that you are making as a nursing student studying for med surge is that you are not studying effectively. You're not being effective with your time management. So again, you are really smart. You've gotten all the way to this point and you've taken a lot of hard science classes. However, med surge is different. And instead of being root memorization, of all of the you know anatomy and physiology or uh biology which is just memorization you're taking what you know about a disease process and then giving it an application so if you are not utilizing solid time management techniques you're going to waste a lot of time to be perfectly honest with you also if you're wasting time you're getting more anxious you're not spending time with your friends you're not doing other things that bring you life and give you joy. And you're also not able to work a part-time job if you're not using science-based study tips. I check out this video on science-based study tips. I include a couple of research studies specifically that have been demonstrated to help people who also have ADHD in nursing school. Also this study, uh, science-based study tips is gonna help you also with the brute memorization. So go check that video out after this one. But if you're not utilizing things that are demonstrated to save you time, in med surge, you're going to feel really overwhelmed because not only do you have to know what pneumonia is, you have to know what signs and symptoms the patient presents with and then what medications are going to be given to the patient, what labs you're going to draw related to that disease presentation, and then what you're going to do about it and then what to not do about it. So it's not just memorization at this point, it's application. And that is something that a lot of students struggle with because you're really good at learning something, but it's kind of hard to then take the thing and then give it in the select all that apply format about the interventions, because med surge is all about interventions. So you have to have a good foundation to know how to manage your time effectively if you're gonna take it from memorizing to application. So again, go check out this YouTube video that talks about science-based study tips. The next tip is that you are starting your studying in the wrong place. So if you have three chapters that have been assigned to you for a specific exam, and you are not starting with the slides and then using the text as a guiding point, you're doing it wrong. You should not be in a place where you're just highlighting the entire chapter. Because again, MedSurge is not about reading a chapter and then being tested on that chapter. MedSurge is about understanding what the patient presentation is going to be and then answering questions based off of interventions. And then how do you get good at that? <laughs> you get good at that by having a really good time management skills and then by doing a ton of practice questions. So there's usually practice questions in the back of your textbook and the back of every chapter and then also online. So if you can go ahead and then start your, start your studying by reading through the slides because typically professors are going to write test questions based off of their own slide set and then also a little bit from the textbook. Start with the slides, use that as your basis of knowledge, make your flashcards based off of the slides and then skim through the textbook. And then at the back of the chapter, take every single practice question. And then after you finish all the practice questions in the back of the chapter, go online, find other people's flashcards and then do a bunch of test questions to prepare for the exam. This is not one where you're going to be wanting to do flashcards as much for preparation for med surge exams. The way that you're gonna get good at med surge exams is by taking a bunch of practice questions. So use practice questions and then start with the slides to guide your study versus the textbook and then the slides. What you don't wanna be doing is sitting there just highlighting the entire chapter because that is a waste of time. The next mistake that you're making is that when you are given a whole paragraph in your test question, you're not thinking about the disease that they're trying to describe. This exam format in med surge is a little bit different in that it's usually not like a one sentence question followed by multiple choice answers. This is where you're gonna to start to see a whole paragraph and then you're going to see a patient presentation. They'll give you vital signs, they'll give you labs, and then they'll ask you what all, are all the things you're going to do based off of that patient presentation. Sometimes you can get lost in reading the paragraph and then not understand that what they're talking about is pneumonia. You get overwhelmed reading the question, the question's really long, you start freaking out, looking at all the multiple choice and the select all that apply options. Take a step back with every single question and ask yourself, what is the disease presentation that they're talking about here? Do I know anything about this? You're like, and then when you realize that, then you can go ahead and be like, okay, well, they're talking about a broken hip. I know what to do with a broken hip. Cool. 
And then from there, you can start to go and cross out the wrong answers to help guide your study. Even if it's something you're not really sure about, like for me, I had a hard time no B because it wasn't really my wheelhouse. I'm not like a labor and delivery nurse and I wasn't really interested in it at the time. But I did learn my um, like my fetal monitoring strips. So then I was able to see like, okay, well this is one is talking about a late deceleration. And then I'm like, all right, I learned something about late decelerations. And then I was able to answer the questions. So every single question in med surge is talking about a patient presentation and then if you can zoom out and think, okay, well, what are they talking about here? Oh, they're talking about sepsis. What do I know about sepsis? And then that's where you're gonna find the right answer. The next thing that you're doing wrong related to reading the text questions is that you're not reading the test question all the way. <laughs> if you are a speed reader like me, I would just skim through questions all the time. And then even in relation to my English exams that I would take in high school, a lot of times I would start with reading the answers first and then go back and read the paragraph and then I would only like skim read like I was one of those kids however in med search they will try to trick you when you do it that way read the entire question and it's usually really long you can have a long question and then hidden in the question somewhere a lot of times is going to give you clues to what the disease process is that they're talking about so if you skip and you kind of skim read the question and you don't read it all the way through, it all the way to the end, a lot of times you're gonna get it wrong just because you didn't even read what they were asking you all the way. So make sure that you're actually slowing down to read the entire test question. The next mistake that you might be making is that you are afraid to change your answers. There is a rumor that was circulating when I was in nursing school by my professors, they started the rumor. They're like, never change your answers. If you do, you're always gonna get it wrong. Uh, that one's not really based in science. So I pulled up a research study. It's not the strongest study in the world. And it's from 2005, which is a long time ago. But I'll have the study on the screen here. It demonstrated that most of the time when students change their answers, I think it was 55% changed it from wrong to right. And then some changed it from wrong to wrong. And then some changed it from right to wrong. But 55% is more often than not. So if you are afraid to change your answer because you think you're always going to get it wrong, that's not always true. So don't be too afraid if you find the right answer later in the test to go back and change it because it's, it's okay to change your answers. And then the next mistake that you're making is that you're not planning out your semester in advance. You're just kind of living in the moment. And I'm gonna say this is a mistake because you're just causing yourself extra stress. So don't do that. Look at the syllabus. <laughs> you don't have to be a color-coded planner girly. You do not have to have different number of highlighters for every single project. You do not have to be like that. What you should do though, is you should be aware of when your midterms are. You should be aware of when your group projects are due and you should be aware of what weeks in the semester are going to be heavier than others. So you can make a plan and approach your studying from a long, uh, like a long haul perspective. So this will prevent you a lot of anxiety when you realize that there's a week that you have three exams and you didn't look ahead. And then you also have a project to do that you didn't work on. And now all of a sudden your time budget is this big and you are also anxious, meaning that you're less effective at studying. Don't do that. Save yourself time. The first week of the semester, go ahead and then on your Google calendar or your Apple calendar or whatever, put the dates of the big exams in your calendar so that you know when they're coming and then work ahead. Do not be the person who's just kind of playing catch up all the time because it's going to make your anxiety worse and then you're going to do less well in exams. So just don't do that. I'm not saying you have to put in your Google calendar every single discussion board or every paper or things that aren't a big deal, but you should have the midterms, the finals, and the dates of every exam in your calendar and you should be working ahead, not just playing catch up day to day, today, today. And there are, I will admit, I'm one of the people who's like, oh, well, you say it's a paper that I can't do in a day, watch me. I'm not talking about papers. If you are one of those people who can like write a paper in a day, you do you. I'm talking about exams that are cumulative. Do not let yourself get to a point where you have an exam in six days and it's cumulative over the entire semester and you didn't study. You don't need to do that to yourself. So plan ahead and just save yourself a little bit of extra time and stress. Also in the video about how to study scientifically, I talk about the forgetting curve and how you can actually like retain information so that you're operating at a baseline of like always knowing what's going on versus cramming, panicking, and then forgetting all the information and then performing really well. Don't 
just don't do that to yourself. So, and also this video talks about like the science-based ways to actually like retain more information over time. So check that one out for sure. Now that we talked about everything not to do, let's talk about a couple of the things that you should do when you're studying for med surge. So I really am a big believer in thinking about the disease presentation as a student, because this is how I teach the ICU new grads and the new to ICU um, critical care nurses and Confident Care Academy. You are thinking about the issue as a whole and how all of the systems relate to that. So if you have a patient who is in sepsis, for example, what does that do to your blood vessels? Okay, well, all the cytokine storm caused vasodilation of the blood vessels. And if you have vasodilated uh, vasculature, then your blood pressure is going to drop because there's not as much squeeze to keep that blood circulating at an even regulation. And then, okay, so we're treating low blood pressure. What medications am I going to use to treat low blood pressure? And then what else am I using for sepsis? Sepsis is an infection, right? So we're going to do antibiotics, we're going to do fluids, we're going to do vasopressors. And then in med surge, this is the beginning of that critical thinking about, okay, here's a patient presentation. What are you going to do about it? So, and I know everything that my nursing professors told me to do, I like didn't want to do out of resentment a little bit, but <laughs> mind maps actually help a lot, especially for each new and if, if you don't have to do a mind map and it doesn't have to be super artistic, just get a piece of paper and write down everything that you know about a topic. Pneumonia. Okay, what causes pneumonia? You can have viral or you can have bacterial pneumonia. Uh, what are things that make pneumonia worse? Lack of bed mobility. That would be a nursing intervention. Lack of respiratory toilet. The patient's not coughing things up enough. Um, yeah, lack of mobility. Uh, what are risk factors for pneumonia? Advanced age, lack of mobility. What are you gonna to do to treat pneumonia? Antibiotics, you might do a bronchoscopy. You might do also, if it proceeds to sepsis, you might do fluids and vasopressors. What are the labs gonna look like with pneumonia? Elevated right, white blood cell count. So it doesn't have to be this like artistic, cute little, I'm drawing lungs and like pneumonia. Like, and if it is that way for you and you like that and you're artistic, contact me because I'm trying <laughs> to build up my blog of people who are a little bit more artistic. So yeah, I've probably got work for you to do for me. Anyway, that being said, that is a really effective way to study is the brain dumping. So after a lecture where you learn about dilated cardiomyopathy, okay, go home and then write out on a piece of paper everything that you understand about the topic. And then that is a way for you to retain the information longer and then also relate all of the different things that you're going to do for that problem. So it's not like anatomy and physiology where you're just learning about the heart valves. You're learning about the disease, what it means for the patient and what you're gonna do about it. And that is really the core of med surge nursing is here's a problem. What am I the nurse gonna do about it? And what am I going to expect is going to happen? And then the next and last tip that I have is that you should just focus on brain dumping related to each disease and then a ton of practice questions. I really don't think that this is a class where flashcards are gonna help you a lot, except for the uh, medications that are gonna go along with each disease. So like, yes, you're going to need to memorize your antibiotics and your chemo drugs and your vasopressors in, a, in med surge two, you're gonna go over critical care. That being said, this is less of a brute memorization class and more of a, what are you gonna do about it class? And when you combine the brain dumping, the grouping everything that you know about a disease process together with your nursing interventions, and then taking a ton of practice questions, this is gonna help prepare you not only to pass the NCLEX, but also for real life. When you see a patient coming in and they have the signs and symptoms of pneumonia, for example, you're gonna know what you're gonna do about it because this is how you've been preparing in nursing school. And I know that the select all that apply questions are really a frustrating format. That's really just to prepare you for the NCLEX. And then once again, to circle it full circle, the NCLEX is just about making sure that you are a safe entry to practice nurse. It's not about making sure that you know everything. It's about making sure that you know how to do assessment and what nursing interventions you're going to do based off of the patient presentation. Please comment what you would like for me to talk about next time and check out confidentcareacademy.com for a lot of continuing critical care education. Thanks. Bye.